Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium, and I'm going to be channeling some messages for you today, answering political questions that you have, that you've sent in to me, and I really appreciate that. This is part three of 9,799,000 <laughs> parts, but this is part three. Hopefully, no, there won't be 9 million parts, but there are a lot of questions, and this is an important time in our timeline. And so it's just helpful to know what the spirit guides know about what's coming for us down the pike, right? It's just nice to have a little look around the corner. So thanks for sending in your questions. So I'm going to start off with Sunny Oak and Sunny Oak wants to know, will Wisconsin get rid of their gerrymandered districts and have new fair maps in place for 2024 presidential election? Very succinct, great way to ask a question. You told the guides all the pertinent details. And I find that when you're specific, they can be specific. So that's great. Will Wisconsin get rid of their gerrymandered district maps? That's part one, to be honest. Hmm. I got no. Hmm. Okay. Let me put a deadline. In time for the 2024 presidential election. I see gridlock. I see fighting. I see red. I see red uh, lines around a map. Uh, this could go to some sort of court case. It could be. It it could be better. I do see some. I, it's just not you. Your question is all or nothing. Are we going to get it all the way done or not? Right. And I what I'm seeing is it's not all the way done. I see I see a map with a red line around it, and I see a map with a blue line around it. I don't know that it's going to be completely fixed by 24. I do know that good work is being done. That there is that there are honest people who are really working on this and who want to be fair. So the energy is there. The intention is there. I'm just not sure they're going to get it done by 24. I do think it'll be better than it is now, but maybe not. There's something left undone. So, so it, no, not the whole thing. We, we are early. We've got time. Perhaps the good will win. The fair will win and this will change. But right now that's what I'm seeing. So let me move on. Joanne Wallace says, will Christy Noam, Noam, however you say her name, she's the governor of South Dakota, leave office before her term is up? You know, there could be some scandal regarding a baby, regarding someone having a baby or getting pregnant. It's not her. She's 51 years old, but there is there, there's a scandal. There could be some scandals coming out, but I'm I'm seeing someone very pregnant. I mean, like, you know, nine months pregnant, unmistakable pregnancy. And there's a scandal around it. And whereas in the past, we, we've seen with our own eyes that scandals don't seem to affect Republicans. They don't seem to care. They, they have no ethics. There's no bottom. However, the energy suggests that this is going to change you know, the not that the Republicans are going to change their idea of if this is scandalous and whether I need to step down or not, what's going to change is the people. The people are going to start holding these Republicans to account and saying, no, you cannot govern. We will not allow you to govern. So there's there's, it, it seems like it's coming at them from both sides, the Republicans and the Democrats. And they're showing me of all people, Bobert. I think this is going to happen to Lauren Bobert because she was in the theater. There's video of her. You cannot deny what was happening in that theater. And I feel like she's going to be drummed out is the word they're using. I feel like her own constituents may say, you know what? This isn't just talk for us. We really are conservative Christians and we are really against what you did and who you are. So this is what I feel like might be coming for the governor is some sort of scandal that gets out of hand. It just grows and grows and it it doesn't go away. It's not a flash in the pan. So does that mean she's going to step down before her before her term ends? I can't imagine. I mean her energy says no. Her energy says 
over my dead body. Seriously, her energy says nothing will make me step down. However, that's what she thinks. Now, if her donors or if the Republican Party, I mean, probably not. She probably won't step down, but it's going to get really ugly for her. Really ugly. She's going to be embattled. It's not going to be pretty. And frankly, the longer she stays in office and the more embattled she is, the more divided the the electorate will be. And when you go to vote again, it's more likely that you'll have a dim win, even if that's a really red state, because they're sick. They're, Republicans are going to be sick and tired of all of this. By the time we get to this time next year, Republicans are going to be disgusted, disgraced. They're not going to even want to be Republicans. The, the whole party, again, is going to implode. So she's going to be caught up in that, I think, for entertainment purposes only and allegedly. Let's move on. Jason Doggart says, do the Spirit Guide see Speaker Kevin McCarthy getting reelected to Congress on January 3rd, 2025? Jason lives in his district. God bless you, sir. You're 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 on the front lines. Okay, so do the spirit guys see Kevin McCarthy getting reelected? I heard no on Congress to Congress on January third. I, I hear no, no. Again, it's the same energy of he's caught up in this roy. The word is roiling. You know, like roiling water, not boiling water although we're getting close to halloween and you could think about witches and boiling kettles but anyway i don't know why they took me there however roiling meaning unsettled and untamable this this energy is untamable they will not be put off you're not going to just be able to say that was a mistake or whatever they say these days. You know what I mean? You're just not going to be able to do that. So I think he's going to get caught up in the same energy. And I'm starting to really like these energy. I don't know about you, but I was just starting to be my roiling might be my, my password now. <laughs> I might change all my passwords to roiling Republicans. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sometimes I crack myself up. Sorry. All right. Barbara, Barbara at Queens Avenue Tarot says, when we have the House, the Senate, and the White House in 2024, will there be A, an end of the filibuster, and B, will we add more justices to the court or impeach some of the crooked ones? Well, in 2024, it is true that we're going to have the power. It's also true that the electorate is just some kind of mad about everything. They're just... I. I feel like even though the Democrats have the upper hand here, it's just not that easy. But I will say to you that uh, the end of the filibuster, I don't know that they have quite that much power. 24, 24, it feels like the energy goes one more. I don't know if that's a year filibuster. 25, I think that's more like 25. Now that's a big deal for us to get rid of the filibuster. Also. Um, that's another question. Why am I even asking a question, answering a question nobody even asked? Okay, hold on. So um, I'm going to go to your second question, filibuster 25. Your second question is add more justices to the court or impeach some of the crooked ones. So I would just say it like this. I would say those justices can leave the Supreme Court in any manner that spirit can make happen, right? So Perhaps one leaves for a health issue, one leaves because they're retiring, one leaves uh, because they're impeached, one leaves because they're being investigated. Let's just open, let's let spirit do this however they want to do it. Now, I think that, yes, we do want to, we want justice. We, we do want them impeached. We do want them investigated. However, I think that given that these people are generally untouchable, having them step down would be a win for me. So I do think that some of these people will step down off the court and, and maybe the impetus is all the same, whether or not they say it's my health or whatever, it's really, I'm being investigated. <laughs> you know, I don't care what excuse they use in other words, because we said this before, the, the energy doesn't stop just because the person steps down 
or they throw somebody under the bus doesn't mean they're going to get off the hook. The energy will follow them. So if these people step down, the energy and the investigation will continue to follow them. So yes, I do see some openings on the Supreme Court. For whatever reason, when I go into Biden's energy, he does not like expanding the Supreme Court. I don't know why. I'm sure he has his reasons. The guy's a lot smarter than me, but he doesn't like it. So when these people step down, we will get a chance to re to reappoint some Supreme Court justices that that and I've always seen this being new types of people. Maybe we'll even have a gay Supreme Court justice, but maybe an Asian Supreme Court justice, maybe more women, more people of color. Uh, I just see a very different, like a tapestry of all different types of people on the Supreme Court. Okay. So that's what I get for your question. Uh, does that answer your question? I think it answers your question. Thank you so much, Barbara. I'm going to move on and I'm trying to remember what they answered that you didn't even ask. Oh, the Electoral College. They started talking about the Electoral College. I don't know if somebody's asked that question. I think so. But anyway, I'll just answer it. So in regards to the, because because when I read filibuster, I heard Electoral College. So let's ask them because they're saying the end of the filibuster. They're telling me the Electoral College will be reimagined. It may not go away but it's going to change. It kind of keeps some of the tenets of why we have the electoral college, but it broadens it and changes it. So it's, it's a new, it's, it's a whole new thing, but it has a few little things that are the same, if that makes sense. So anyway, I don't know if you guys were wondering about the electoral college. I have been wondering about the electoral college because it seems like it's not working. Okay, let's move on. Eileen Harris your question is, I just want to know for the peace of mind of the Democrats will win the presidency and the Senate and the House in 24. Yes, I see that. If it changes, I will be the first person in front of you telling you something's changed. This energy has been the same. It seems to be locked in. But right now, it is the same. Your second question, however, is hopefully in 28. That's where all bets are off. 28 is up for grabs. I'm going to be honest with you. It's just up for grabs. There's so many changes that are going to happen between now and 28 that for me to predict would be silly. Um, it is literally up for grabs. Anything can happen. It really depends on what the Democrats get done while they're in office. And I've said this many, many times. If they get big ticket things done, they make Gen Z happy. I know I keep talking about Gen Z, but Gen Z is a lot of people. It's going to be a a block. It's going to be a voting block that's going to be very powerful. If they get things done that makes you know Americans happy, maybe they'll we'll get another 28. But I think probably for 28 is when I'm going to be irritated because I really think though we'll have a Democrat president and, and a Republican vice president. I keep seeing that energy. It's this Let's all hold hands and sing Kumbaya together. Okay, fine. I'm good with that. I will go hold your hand and sing Kumbaya. However, it this is different. This is called governing. <laughs> and I need governing to be done by the best people, by the people that represent the majority of Americans. So I don't think we need to do that just to get people to come together. I don't think it's going to work, honestly. It it's just not going to work. So we'll see. We'll see. Thank you for your question. Uh, Pat Lee says, what did a guide see for Representative Swalwell's future? He just did an excellent takedown of Jim Jordan. He is great. Uh, Swalwell is great. I feel like he may run for Senate, honestly. And not right now. But he feels Senator. He feels like he's going to be moving to the Senate. Yeah, that's what I see. I feel like he's going to be a senator. I don't know if that's, that that could be three year. It could be, he's, he's, there's a sense of him maneuvering or figuring out, you know, when the seat's going to be open or there, there's a sense of strategy. There's a sense of strategy, 
Um, and so it, it has to be, there's only two senators. And unless we do something crazy with the electoral college really quickly, which I'm not sure that timing is exactly going to be quickly, then, you know, he has to wait his turn or whatever. But, but that's where I see him going as I see him going into the Senate. Okay. So let's see. New England nomad says, and I did get your correction on this dear, the November 7th races, Virginia House of Delegates, the Virginia House and State Senate. Okay, we're talking about state races. Okay, I see more blue. I don't know that it goes all the way blue, but I see more blue. I see an upset. Somebody upsets. It feels like a young person, a young blue person upsets a seat or I I just see more blue, but I do see red being prominent. So I don't see, I don't see an overtaking of this by all blue, but I feel like there's some hard won races and there's an upset. And it, and I feel like blue, the Democrats make a pretty good showing. Maybe, you know, maybe there's disappointment. I feel like there's disappointment, but I, I think we're all excited about this energy and we can all feel the energy, but I think sometimes it's, you can be a little too over optimistic. There's still a red bastion. I get the word bastion, a red, you know, a red root or heart. So um, that's not going to just be removed. So, but definitely more blue. All right. Thank you for your question. Pamela Lee powers astrology says, have you checked in with how Lauren Bobert's lot with fair will fair in the next election will her rival win this time right i just we just brought up lauren bobert i do think she's going to be drummed out i don't think she's going to do another round there right now anyway the energy suggests that she's not going to make it the energy suggests again i don't know why they keep talking about funding and donors donors pulling back funding being pulled back from her she's a liability i'm getting and and an un, unchecked liability, like we don't know what she's going to do and we can't have our money associated with that. So there might be more to come with her. She might have some more situations, um, lots of, um, you know, lots of dramatic things like with, with you know, Chrissy Noam and lots of dramatic things starting to happen here with the uh, Republicans. Pretty interesting. It'd be more interesting if I was living in Canada, which is where uh, this next question is centered. Miss Seattle Rain says, how bad will the situation between Canada and India become? Because I read about this in the last video. Okay, India allegedly assassinated someone on Canadian soil, but India is saying he was a terrorist. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's still extrajudicial, right? You know, like that's what the guides were saying in the past video. This is outside of the law. You don't just get to come over to Canadian soil and assassinate somebody, even if you think this person is a terrorist. I mean, there's laws, people. This is the thing. Like, it's just crazy, right? These people believe that they can just do anything and they're untouchable. So your question is, will the U.S. be dragged into this? Well, initially what I read on in the past video is the United States was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And honestly, this has big implications internationally because we have the same problem. We're about to get, you know, put Trump in in front of a jury and there's going to be international implications here. That's why Jack Smith brought in this new prosecutor who's internationally trained, internationally experienced. We all are now dealing with what has been in front of us for a long time, which is these countries have been acting rogue on our soil and we've been turning a blind eye to it. So I think that push comes to shove. Biden has got Trudeau's back. Biden Biden has your back. He's a loyalist. He's he I think at first they were like, whoa. And now they're sort of like realizing we got the same problem. This energy is is persisting everywhere. It's not just in Canada. It's not just in the United States. So I think that we will be dragged into it, but I don't think, well, when I said that, I saw India. I, I've just been talking about this, thinking about Biden and Trudeau, but then I brought India, you know, Modi into this thing. And Modi is a bit of a, 
a problem in the sense that I think that he can be dramatic, but but not predictable. He can be unpredictable. He he can be um, I don't know what that word is. He unpredictable, I guess, is the thing. And and that's a problem, right? So I feel like Biden's going to stand with Trudeau, and I think Tr- Trudeau's not going to back down. This. So the other thing that happened is we have evidence apparently from Five Eyes, which is like Five Eyes is like the International Spy Association, you know, like the CIA, the MI6, you know, all these groups that come together as well as how I understand it, and they watch international uh, spying and international, in, you know, intrigue. So there's apparently real evidence that India did this. And now India is saying, well, he was a terrorist. He was against us. He was going to hurt us. He, Well, again, I just want to state there is a court of law. We don't do extrajudicial killings. We don't. Just like Kasoji. Again, this keeps coming up and up again. You can't just kill people you don't like, a la 45. This is what 45 would do. We're finally dealing with this energy. I think it's a good idea. I think we need to do it because I think that we're fixing to have to do it ourselves with Trump and Jack Smith. So, yeah. Next question is also for Trudeau. How did all this happen? These things all glom together and I take them off of YouTube and I just throw them in. They're not in any order, but yet somehow spirit makes an order of it. Will Trudeau stay in power? Well, I think he's going to stay in power to till his till his um election he's been he's been dealt a raw hand he's been dealt a bad hand um that's what the guides are saying i don't know if you're pro trudeau or not i'm just telling you what the guides are saying he's been dealt a bad hand there does seem to be there there may be some sort of scandal or some sort of thing and, and i'm not even talking about the india thing i'm talking about something else they're setting him up they're, they're, the the energy, the words that I'm getting is they're setting him up for a fall. He's he's clean. He's he's not done anything, but they're setting him up. It's it's a little it's again, it's a little bit about like how they're trying to set Biden up. They're impeaching Biden. They're going after his son. It's it's very similar energy. It's funny how the energy is the same everywhere and it's just manifesting slightly differently. He I do believe he stays in power, but they are coming for him. It is not going to be pretty. I feel like he has support, but not broad support. And I feel like after he's done with his terms, he's going to be seen as a really good, you know, leader. But right now, no. But at, in, with distance, he's going to be seen as a really good leader. Okay, let me move on. Mary Myers says, DeSantis has forcefully changed new college in ew college in florida into a conservative college new college was like really really different out there nonconformist college for people that felt nonconformist and desantis has forced them into being a conservative college will the college be able to return to its former form within a few years i think the better question is can we at least look at the ugly here? Can we look at the ugly that this is fascism? This is a governor saying, no, you're not going to teach nonconformist ideas. You're going to conform. I'm going to throw all this you know, out and you have to become what I want you to be. Y'all, this, this didn't even happen when we were in the fascist times of our country, right? This is insane that this is happening in Florida. It's absolutely mind boggling that we're letting this guy get away with it because we don't have any recourse. There's no laws. Again, everywhere they're doing this is where they've discovered nobody can stop them. There's no check on this power. So we have to get busy. The more important question is, will the state of Florida pass laws to protect these institutions right that's the that's the important question right because once the laws are, are passed to protect the institutions then new college can then reimagine itself into whatever it's going to be because i i think it is going to change i don't see it going back to whatever it was i feel like it's going to be 
a very liberal college, but I think it might turn into some sort of environmental college, but very liberal, like very, very climate change oriented. We're here for Florida. We've got to figure this out. I don't know that I don't, I know a little bit about new college, but not much, but that's what I'm seeing. And I do think that Florida will do this because what they're showing me is, is that, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that a lot of Florida's, and there's a few other states that are like this, but a a lot of Florida's investments, their teacher investments, their state investments are in Russia. And that's not going to do well. Russia's not doing well. (laughs) So, and it's not going to do well anytime soon. So. Once Floridians figure out that a lot of their state pensions and a lot of their money is gone, I think it's really going to turn this whole fascist thinking ideology on its head. And I think that's going to spur new democracy. Plus, honestly, Mother Nature is, you know, teaching Florida a thing or two. So Florida really is on the, the, the front, the forefront of climate change. And they're they're not going to be able to deny this. They're going to have to get help from the government. They can't get insurance. There's just so many problems going on with Florida right now that's really going to turn the people against these Republicans and against this fascist ideology. So let's move on to Laura. Laura, I can't say your last name, so I'm just going to skip it. (laughs) Hi, Laura. All right. Will Steve Bannon and Roger Stone be held accountable? Bannon is, yes, on the short list. He's being held accountable. His days are numbered. He might be a wanted man or a hunted man. Someone may be hunting him. Somebody, he's got issues. He's got more problems than than he can fix. And they're bigger than he is. And they're not going to stop coming for him. And I think they're just going to wear him down. So yes, he's going to be held accountable. Roger Stone, I, Roger Stone is one of those things where he should have been in prison already. And if he had been in prison, maybe things had changed. Um, you know, certainly regarding around Jan 6, things might've been a slightly different. Of course, there were many actors involved in that, but he was a primary person. And he, and he continues to be a, a problem for democracy in the United States. I do think he's going to be held accountable. He, both of them are going to be held accountable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. D. Kenny says a question about Irish politics here. Will Mary Lou McDonald be Ireland's first female Taoiseach, which is the prime minister? Thank you so much for giving me the pronunciation of that because I never would have thought that word was Taoiseach. So thank you for that. Um, Do the guides see reunification between the Republic and Northern Ireland? Corruption, what we call the brown envelope culture, runs rife through Irish society and always has. But I worry about the rise of a far right nationalist contingent coming to power. I'd much prefer if we would go far left and bring uh, Sinn Féin, Sinn Féin into government. Well, okay. What the spirit guides would like, what what the energy that feels the best is balance. So not far left, not far right, but a balance. And the only way that you're going to have a a, a reunification between the Republic and Northern Ireland is through balance. There's going to have to be lots of compromise, and that's been kind of the problem. What is the compromise part? But I do feel like, I feel like there is a reunification and and maybe what leads that is economics is it's better economics for the, you know, for this, for, for Ireland to be really together like this is going to benefit some big economic thing. And that is to come. That is not, that's not really here yet, but it is coming in maybe in 24, there's an opportunity for a big economic windfall and that windfall brings Ireland together. Now you're worried about a far right. You're worried about uh, corruption. So, right. You would want to worry about corruption anytime there's a big economic windfall, right? So 
I don't see it. I, I mean, I'm not saying, I don't think any of us are going to get rid of corruption. I, I just, we're in a dualistic planet. It, it's not possible. We're always going to have a shadow. We're always going to have light. Always, always. What we want, what we're striving for is more of a, a sustainable, is the word they want to use, balance. This is not sustainable. This is not sustainable. Far right, far left is not sustainable. What we really want is to try to keep this tricky balance. I do see a balance between, between the powers in Ireland. It's a little bit of an uneasy balance, but it is a balance. And I think that if they can keep that going for a few years... It'll be good. You'll be good. But for a year or two, it's a little uneasy. It's as if this side doesn't want to trust this side. This side doesn't want to trust this side. With a few years, the trust is there. The trust is proven. And you guys move on. Basically, I think you're in a better shape than even the United States because you've been through this, you know, hell. You've been through the troubles. So you understand what hangs in the balance. And I think you guys will be more likely to get through this and work through this and come out the other side. So I think it's going to be okay. Zoop D. Do says, are the military behind a lot of what's going on in the political ring and the fires, meaning I guess the wildfires? Um, no, I don't think so, dear. I don't, First of all, if you're talking about the rank and file military, absolutely not. They're they're nowhere near this. And then when I go into the generals or the higher ups, I don't think they're in this either. I think the military proved themselves when they didn't join Jan 6. When and I'm not a huge fan of, of General Miley, whatever, but you gotta say he could have the generals could have change the outcome. They could have joined the coup. They didn't. I think that proves to you right there that they are trustworthy, that they're not going to get involved. Now, the problem that you have is the military answers to the president. So if Trump had them doing something that was, well, you know, they're showing me right now, Trump tried to get them to do things that was not constitutional and the military said, no, we're not going to do that. I, I'm not saying to you that our government or our military hasn't done things that I would not like. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying right now, no, I don't see them involved in this. I don't see them involved in this. They may look like they're involved in the sense that they don't act, but that's because of orders. And then, then you get into politics, but I don't see it. Okay. Let me move on. Marilyn Miner says, what are the chances that Russia will be removed from the United Nations Security Council, perhaps even the United Nations as a whole, when the USSR dissolved, Russia adopted that seat without a vote of the General Assembly as required. So there is at least that pathway forward. That's that's really interesting. And the guides brought up the Security Council a few videos ago. All they have to do is one more thing. Like if they do chemical warfare on Ukraine, if they do something else that's egregious, I think the energy is building. It's not there yet, but I think the energy is building towards the end of this year to knock them out in the spring of next year. It could be around Putin getting deposed and a and and deposed through some coup and then some other entity person taking over his role that might that might also give some sort of real teeth to the reason why we have to take Russia out of the Security Council because they've they've been deposed. They're, it's it's an unlawful presidency. So there's energy around that as well. They're talking about that also in um, between now and February of next year. So there, it seems like there's a lot of energy between now and February of next year for them to be out of the Security Council. And then you're even asking about getting removed from the United Nations as a whole. Uh, it depends on this coup. It depends on who takes over for Putin. If they're seen as a western ally or they could be a western ally then possibly it kind of depends on that to, to me it i let me ask it a different way will russia be removed from the un from the united nations i just heard no so 
I think they should, but that's what I heard. Now, again, it depends on free will. It depends on what Putin decides to do. If he decides to do many more dastardly things, then it might make it to a point where the United Nations is pushed against a wall and they have to do it. But we have to have the votes and there's votes in there that are pro-Putin. So we have to just see how this is going to play out. If I could get him off the United Nations Security Council, I think that would be a really good first step. Okay, let's move on. TJUJ1SR says, do the guides say anything about the possibility of DJT having anything to do with the actual death? I'm just going to say the actual death of Jamal Khashoggi at the hands of MSB or MBS or whatever his name is. Did he request or approve it beforehand? You know, here's the thing. You guys are really giving DJT or 45 too much credit. He doesn't have that kind of power, you guys. He really doesn't. He is not the person who says, get rid of this person. He's the person who gets orders. He gets orders. He doesn't give orders. I know he looks powerful because all the Republicans are shaking in their boots and people tend to listen to him. That's only because he's got the poll numbers, which are wrong, but it's only because he's got the MAGAs. But now as he's touring the United States and we're seeing just how many are showing up to his, you know, his events, we're starting to get a better idea of what his true support is. So that's where his power lays. His power lays in the fact that he's convinced and and coerced and whatever these people that he is powerful, but he's really not. That the killing of Khashoggi was did not come from Trump. He he can't. That's not something that he has the ability to do. Even if he wanted to do it, he would have to run it past his puppets, his handlers. Now, where there's a connection is through perhaps and allegedly his son-in-law. You know, his son-in-law is the one who went to the prince and said, Here's a list of your foes. Here's a list of your enemies. And then all of a sudden, people started disappearing. And allegedly, Khashoggi was one of those people on the list. So Trump has a connection to this, but only through Jared, right? And so really, I think this is hanging on. This is Jared. Jared allegedly would be the accomplice, right? Okay, let me move on. Andrew, Andrew Hockley says, What are RFK Jr.'s, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s motives in primarying Biden and supporting Putin? What will his impact be on our politics and the upcoming election? How will his dance with destiny go? I love that. How will his dance with destiny go? You know, what's interesting is when I go into RFK, his energy, I'm not doing this on purpose, but I swear the Kennedys show up and then the Kennedys want, then the Kennedys are here with the queen. I don't know what is happening. And then the queen says, by explanation, by explanation, we, we all have one. We all have had one in our family, meaning an RFK junior. We've all had one in our families. And she says, but the royal family knows how to dispose of them, (laughs) which is brutal, which is brutal. And it's true. When, when somebody is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, you know, they, they either give them a job where they're not going to get in trouble. Um, well, you know, she's wrong. I'm, I'm over here arguing with the queen, but anyway, you know, they had some Kings that were literally batshit crazy. So anyway, I don't know. The point being that here's this storied family, quote unquote, and here you have this guy who's completely just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So what are his motives? His motives is he's his energy is very destructive. Like, I just want to destruct. I want to disturb. I want to agitate. He's an agitator. He doesn't. He grew up in this in this uh, like almost like um. I want to say a stall, 
<laughs> I I, I want to say a pin, a cage, but really it's like a horse stall. <laughs> like, you know, he had these blinders. He had these guidelines. Don't do this. Don't do this. You're a Kennedy for Christ's sakes. You've got to do this. And he hated it. He's always hated it. So he wants to burn it all down. He's the one in the family that wants to burn it all down. Um, and, and if that means burn democracy down, he's okay with that. He just wants, he's a, he's just a, a, an annihilist. He wants to burn it all down. So that's his motives. And he, he really likes the spotlight. He really likes look at me, but he, he detest being a Kennedy. He kind of detest having to follow that very boring, you know, um, path. He wants to be, look at me. I'm better. I'm it's, it's really this sense of ego, the sense of egomania. I'm better. Look at me all follow me. So I'm not sure if there's not a little, you know, woohoo going on up there or something like a real diagnosis that could be applied to this gentleman, but that's his motives. When I go into his energy, that's his motives. He wants, he wants to be the, he wants to be the president. He wants to be the face of the country. He want he, he literally has some sort of grandiosity problem. Uh, so, and what will his impact be on our politics? I don't think he'll have much of an impact on our politics. I mean, he's definitely a disruptor. That's the word I was looking for. I said every other word, but disruptor. Disruptor is the word I was looking for. He's definitely disrupting and is a disruptor. But I don't see him dividing the Democrats at all. I don't see him getting Republicans. I just see, uh, what is that they're talking about? Something in fury, sound and fury at nothing. That's a famous line in a poem, I think. All sound and fury. So, I don't know. They got to give me the whole thing if they want me to say it. Signifying nothing. Sound and fury signifying nothing. Something like that, right? It's a famous line. Look, y'all, I'm just, I'm just. I'm just the translator. Okay, so he, he's not going to amount to anything. There's nothing to worry about. He's really he's really just a, a thorn. He's really just being a thorn, right? Because he's embarrassing and irritating, and, and he's just kind of a thorn on our side. So how will his dance with destiny go? Not well. They just said not well. Washed up. Um, what is that word when they... Um marginalized but there's a different word for it he's going to be marginalized he's going to be the, who in the heck am i channeling they just said he's going to be in the dustbin of history which i think is also another famous line from something he's going to be in the dustbin of history maybe andrew you're a literary person maybe you read poetry maybe you're some sort of because i don't know i'm connected to your energy and all of a sudden i'm coming up with all these quotes and hopefully you know what they are but anyway I wouldn't get too worked up about him. I'm not worried about him. I'm worried about Liz Cheney. <laughs> That's who I'm worried about. <laughs> Y'all know I am, right? Liz, I, I'm worried about Liz and I'm worried about Adam Kinzinger. Those are the two that I really worry about. But I am not worried about RFK. Okay, let me move on. M. Turple says, will Ohio finally get a fair district maps eliminating the gerrymandering? Ohio will get better, better maps they will get better maps. They're not going to eliminate gerrymandering. It, it seems like it's a, a balance of red and blue. It is, it, balance is the wrong word. Balance is the wrong word. Is it, is it the right word? Balance? Balance would be fair. Or is it fair? More fair. It's more fair. Uh, they're saying no side is ever going to be happy. That's what they're saying to me. No side is ever going to be happy, but it will be more fair more fair. Okay, great. That's fine. Nurse M says, will Medicare be impacted in the next few years, like reduced or even eliminated? I don't see that. If the Democrats can really get either Wheaties show up and just really put it on blast, they could be the group that finally creates Medicare for all. I've been seeing Medicare for all for a long time. I've been talking about us getting Medicare for all for a long time. Of course, it's not for all. All There will be some sort of, you know, salary or income, you know, thing, but it's going to be 
better. It's going to be much, the the income is going to be much higher. It's not going to be only for those at whatever poverty level. It's going to be for working class. It's going to be pretty good, actually. Now, again, nothing is perfect, but it is really, really much better than we have. And now, if they don't, if the, if the Democrats don't get their boost on, and we have to do this in 28, like I've said to you guys, 28, the bets are off for 20, 20, let's see, 24, 20, why am I saying 20? Oh, right, 28, because that's right. The bets are off for 28. I don't see Democrats having the same power in 28. I don't think we're going to be out of power, but I think there's some power sharing thing happening. And, you know, the Republicans aren't a big fan of Medicare for all. But what I've seen is that makes sense is industry or or the healthcare industry is not going to want to take care of us. Americans are all heading towards type two diabetes, hypertension. We're all we're all heading towards a lot of big ticket healthcare things. And you want to know what? We can't afford it. Americans can't afford it. So guess what happens? The government comes in. So how I see this working is they expand Medicare for all. And also they get on to us about exercising and meditating and taking care of ourselves. They get on to the food industry where a lot of our industry, a lot of our ingredients are actually banned in other countries, but yet we're able to eat them, gobble them up here. They're making us sick. So you'll see more regulations on the food industry that match Europe's re- regulations. You'll see more preventative care. You're just, the whole healthcare thing is going to get changed. And then what you're going to see is the healthcare industry is going to be able to finally do what they've always wanted to do, cherry pick. They just want the healthy, rich people anyway. So rich people are not going to join Medicare for all. They're going to get their own private insurance. They're going to get their Cadillac insurance. Fine. If you can afford it, go for it. At least more of us will get care. At least the government will get serious about helping us Americans get healthier, stay healthier, and live longer and not be poisoned by these, you know, terrible ingredients that are in our in our foods. Okay. And if you want to know, you can just Google what's illegal in Europe food-wise that's legal in America. You're going to be surprised. Okay. Let's move on. Carol Lundgren says that you saw a Facebook post that solar panel farms were the reason for the huge thunderstorms and climate problems. What do the guides say? Propaganda by dark money or fossil fuel companies, or is it true? It's not true. The solar panels are are receiving. They're not sending anything out. They're simply just passively receiving the windmills passively receiving. No, it's not true. It's, 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 it's propaganda by the forces that want you to not go solar that because if you go solar, then you don't need oil. (laughs) You don't need, you don't need them. So you're going to see a lot of propaganda, a lot of psychological operations like this that are going to, you know, tempt you to start thinking about maybe this is causing a problem. What do I know? This is a scientist saying this. Do your due diligence. Google, Google, Google is your friend. Don't just trust whatever you see because this is only going to get worse. This this propaganda, this psy operations are only going to get worse. And and you know, a certain a certain age of us, a certain group, we're more likely to fall for it because we're not really that used to this kind of thing. Whereas the younger generation is going to be like, yeah, that's crazy and then move on. But we are the ones that are going likely to fall prey to this. So no, it's not true. It's propaganda. Okay. Stacey Egan says, aside from Barack Obama and Kamala Harris, it seems that the torch of political leadership will likely skip over Generation X, those with Pluto in Virgo in their natal chart, from boomers and on to the younger generations. What alternative role do the guides see for this generation asking as someone who is in this cohort or group? Yeah, I'm in that group too. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's jumping over us for a lot of reasons. We're not a big group. We're The boomers are a huge group. We're not a big group. We're not a big population. 
And you want to know what alternative role do we play? Well, I think for us, honestly, we're going to be support for Gen Z. I think that we are, we're the bridge generation, right? The boomers know what it's like to march. They know what it's like to be sprayed with tear grass. They, they know how to deal with that stuff. We don't. We had our other, we had our own problems. Those were not our problems. We're the bridge between the boomers and, and even over all the other generations like the millennials to Gen Z. Gen Z is the rabble rousers. I often tell you guys they should come with a warning label because what I see in 28 is they're not likely to just go along with the Democrats. They're not, they're not, they're cats. They're independents. They're not going to throw their lot in with anybody. If the Republicans offer them something genuinely that could help them, they'll all vote Republican. If the Democrats genuinely help some offer them something, they'll vote Democrats. Now, the interesting thing is if you don't produce, if you literally get gridlocked or don't produce, they'll go third party. I mean, they'll blow the whole thing up. I'm telling you, they should come with a warning label. So yeah, they're going to save us in 24. Absolutely. Because we, the Democrats are the best thing for them. However, in 28, if the Democrats don't get it done, all bet, all, all, all bets are off. But I think what your question is, is I think Gen Z, Gen X is we are, we're the bridge. All they just keep saying is we're the bridge. We're, we're going to work with Gen Z. We're going to learn what we can from the boomers. We're going to pass it down to Gen Z. We are going to be their mothers and fathers in the streets. We're going to be the, the crew, the old people, so to speak, that they, they look up to. We're going to help them. You know, we're going to be there with them. We're going to be in the streets with them. I really do. I think the boomers had their chance. I think this is Gen X's chance. We're going to be in the streets with them. So uh, let's move on. Deli Lane says, will Judge Chuck can move Trump's trial date for the January 6th coup to December due to him breaking the gag order? So if you guys don't know, Judge Chuck, Chuck can said, if you, if you do what I, if you break the rules that I've set for this court case. I'll move your court case up. That that was the threat. The threat is I'll just move your court case up. So you're asking, will she do it? Will she move the court case up? I think there's a really good chance. I'm hearing November. There's a really good chance that she does it. That is going to blow people's minds. Could be November. She's not kidding. This woman is not kidding. You don't you don't want to play with this woman. Can't anybody look at her and see that you should not play with this woman? You, you just wonder about Trump sometimes. Well, you know, he thinks he's above everybody and he's got that RFK thing, that kind of delusional, egotistical, untouchable kind of energy that's completely delusional. There's no basis, in fact. So, of course, he doesn't look at Judge Chutkin and think, this woman, I shouldn't mess with this woman because he doesn't have any sense. But yeah, I think she really may move it up. She's not playing. And, and she's not, they're telling me she's not out of moves. She's got more chess pieces to play. She's got more moves to take. Even beyond simply moving the case up, she's got more, I don't know how else to describe it, um, arrows in her quiver. Okay, let's move on to Rose Blue says, will marijuana be removed from Schedule 1 list by summer of 2024? The DEA is waiting for the recommendation love letter from the HHS last month. Human Health and Services, is that what that is? Okay, yes, I think it will be removed from Schedule 1. Biden wants this. He wants this. Uh, he His administration is for this. Yeah, I feel like so. Yeah, I do feel like so. I'm hearing May. That's summer. Okay, Rose Blue. Um, I don't know what that means as far as like, like making it legal. I don't know if it makes it less illegal, if it makes, if you get caught with it, if it's less of a problem. I don't know what that means, schedule one, but I'll tell you that we're really in a pickle right now with the, with our Republic. You know, our Republic is that we have states rights. That's, that's what makes us a Republic, but we're governed by a democracy. Well, we're in a pickle because, you know, you can buy marijuana in Colorado, but not in Texas. And, and Texas passed 700 new laws. I don't even know what they are. So how, I don't know what they are. 
How do you know if you're coming from Illinois and you'd break a law in Texas? I mean, how are we supposed to keep up with this? It's getting to the point where, he, and what, what they're telling me is what happens is states don't enforce those crazy laws, right? Like there's a law that says that if Texas wants to, they don't have to acknowledge or accept a driver's license from another state. But we don't do that because we need interstate travel and commerce. Well, this is getting to be a problem. It's getting, it's too just disjointed. Citizens cannot, we're getting too disjointed. That's all I can tell you. You go to New Mexico and you get all these rights and then you move to Texas and all your rights are taken, taken away. People don't like that. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start causing real problems. And so I don't know this, the, the, the solution is in the federal government. We keep telling you guys, the guides keep saying this over and over again, that a lot of these problems in the States are going to have to be fixed at the federal level because it's just like, um, seat belts, right? We fix that at the federal level. We said, okay, everybody has to do this, right? So there's going to be a lot of those laws that are going to be passed in 24, 25, 26 that are like, everybody has to do this. So I think that Perhaps even marijuana is going to be legalized throughout the country because it's just too hard for citizens to keep track of what's legal and what and what state. And there's no pass given. You know, there's no pass given. If you have a New Mexico or you have a Colorado ID, you don't get a pass for bringing that into Texas. So it's really causing problems is what the guides are saying. And I think that it's going to be something that they look at in 26, 24, 25, 26. Okay. A couple of more questions. Teresa says, let's talk. Okay, Teresa, let's talk about Kristen Cinema and Joe Manchin. What's truly their deal? <laughs> um, yes, truly their deal is Kristen Cinema allegedly and for entertainment purposes only. I feel like she gets uh she gets paid off. I mean that's what I'm getting. I mean I'm I'm telling you allegedly she gets direct payments and, and, and these things can be hidden in they're hidden in some way, but they're just, they just keep showing me how she dresses and, and she has a pension, I guess, for like high fashion or expensive things. There's just, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't add up, right? When you look at somebody and you think you can't afford this. You know what I mean? Like there's no way, you know, something just doesn't add up with her when it comes to money. So I think for her, it's about the money. It's not about the power. She doesn't, she doesn't want the power. She doesn't care about the power. She wants the money. Now with Joe Manchin, Joe Manchin's also about money, but it's also about power. I don't know why, but I'm seeing his yacht. I, I don't know why, but I think he has a yacht or a big boat. It's about... Joe Manchin enjoys the backroom dealing. He likes that. He likes the negotiation. He likes uh, he likes the backroom dealing. And he also likes the power and he likes the money. He, he likes the notoriety. He likes to go to his state and people say, wow, you brought this manufacturing plant or wow, you did this for us. He likes that. He doesn't hide from his constituents. He wants to be among them. He wants to be thanked. But that's coming to an end for him, I think. And and also for Kristen Cinema, they're going to they're going to primary her. They're going to they're going to take her out. Now she's an independent, so they don't need to primary her, but they're going to run somebody against her and I think this person is going to be very well funded and well well supported. Now with Mansion, the problem is you got West Virginia, which is supposedly a Democrat state. And if Biden does anything good for, for, for West Virginia, Joe Manchin's going to look good. So it's kind of a problem. He might be in some trouble. Joe Manchin might be in some trouble. He might get caught up. It's like, um, think about, uh, hopefully you guys can understand these metaphors. Think about standing on a boat and then you throw the anchor over and the rope is going with the anchor and you see the rope going, woo, 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 and then all of a sudden you realize the rope has gotten tangled around your leg <laughs> and you go, woo, 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 right into the water, right to the bottom. <laughs> so it's, it's like something snags him. Something goes by him and snags him. He doesn't think 
he's involved or he doesn't think he's going to get nailed for it. He doesn't think that he's directly involved in it. But I'm telling you, and this is allegedly, these RICO things are crazy because you don't need to be directly involved. That's how they bring a whole bunch of people down at once. So again, something goes by and snags him with it. So he goes down because of some other things. Whether it's Rico or not, he goes down because of somebody else who pulls him down. So that's kind of fascinating. Uh, Let's do one more question. Ellen uh, says she has a question about Cornell West. Cornell West has announced that he's running for president of the Green Party. I mean, don't you like the way they've hijacked the Green Party? I mean... It just, I would be upset, but I've already gone 7,000 degrees past that kind of upset just dealing with Trump. So this is nothing for me anymore. But back in the day, this probably would irritated me. Okay, so uh, he's running for the, you're having, and, and, and Ellen is having nasty flashbacks to Ralph Nader and Jill Stein throwing elections to the Republicans. I don't feel like Cornell West is the Green Party. I mean, I think Jill Stein, you could have said, yeah, okay, she's the Green Party. You know, Ralph Nader had his own thing. He had his own his own way to divide. I don't see Cornell West dividing us. And I'll say this for whatever reason. I mean, it, it can be just freaking magic. I don't know. Meaning this is energy that's not explainable to me. Everybody's on the bandwagon. Gen Z is on the bandwagon. All the generations are on the bandwagon. Everybody's on the bandwagon. For the Democrats, it's like they're on the bandwagon now, but we're going to learn things that's going to curl our toes, the guides are saying. So then more people are going to get on the bandwagon like we can't let these Republicans who have clearly, I mean, just clear and present danger is what they just said. The Republicans are going to represent to people at the end of this year clear and present danger. I know that has some meaning. I might put it on the screen. It has a specific meaning. It doesn't mean what you think it does. So when people see this, they're all going to jump on the bandwagon and they're all going to put Democrats in. That puts a lot of pressure on the Democrats. This is what I'm saying. The Democrats have been given carte blanche. They've been given the thing. They better get it done. They've got to get it done. What does it mean? They've got to pass bills that are big bills, big things that people care about. So I see everybody coming together for 24. Then in 28, the wheels fall off the bus. We'll have to see what happens in 28. That energy feels kind of disruptive to me. But in this in this magical time between now and November of next year, I feel like we're good. We're solid. If it changes, I'll let you know. I'll be the first to let you know. But right now, this was what the energy feels like, okay? Okay, thank you so much for joining me today in part three of 9,759 parts two questions that your spirit guides are answering for you. (laughs) If you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button, share it with your friends, like it, whatever whatever works for you works for me. If you want to know when I have a video out, click the bell and you will get a notification when I have a video because there might be a part four. You never know, right? Take really, really good care of yourselves. We'll talk again real soon right here on this channel. Susan Lynn, Psychic Medium, signing out. For entertainment purposes only.